Okay, this is our well heater, or what used to be our well heater anyways. My dad just recently found out that it wasn't even working for who knows how long. And the caution light here is on. And he was just going to throw it out, but I seen him walk in the house with it, so I of course took it. Because I wanted to take it apart here and see what went wrong. I'm guessing a heat fuse blew because it's very moist down in the well, as you would imagine. The fan seized up, of course. It lasted for two years, though. That's pretty good. So yeah, those heating elements would have just been glowing red and turning off from the overheat switch and turning back on in a little bit and glowing red again. And then it just did it long enough that it actually wrecked the heat fuse. But uh, that's just my theory. We're going to find out. I already got it tore apart. I don't recommend you have your unit plugged in and turned on while you take it apart. That just, you know, that's just something bad waiting to happen. Though I am sensible enough to do so. Hopefully anyways. By the way, it's an Optimus. Now I've turned this a little bit and it didn't get any better. It's just <laughs> way, way too unturnable for this weak little motor to do anything. Anyways, this is the first thing I noticed here. Look at this plastic covering for the windings. Notice how it looks burnt from the bottom to about halfway up and then the rest of the plastic seems alright like both the heater element glowing red and the fact that the fan wasn't able to bring air across the motor and cool it. <laughs> wow, this thing's probably unsavable. The motor probably burnt out during that process that it killed this little heat safety fuse. That right there is the heat safety fuse. I don't know. I don't know if it's for the both the fan and the element or just the elements so I don't know I'm gonna have to figure that out but this is the little overheat safety switch well I got the element and fan assembly out here and um, it's smelling pretty burnt in the fan area <laughs> like you know just like I don't know really strong plasticky smell and there's that little overheat switch I was talking about See when it warms up it opens like this and when it cools down it completes the contact again and yeah I'm just gonna try and bypass this overheat fuse see if the elements kick in maybe the fan I doubt the fans gonna kick in there's probably a separate one in the fan that's burnt out because I can't feel any vibrations or nothing and I left the fan just the fan on for about five minutes and the fan didn't even get warm so it's telling me it's not getting power yes I unplugged it before I touched the motor duh okay I've done the unthinkable and bypassed this heat safety fuse with uh, one big strand of snare wire the really thin stuff I just wrapped it all together and just kind of wrapped it on the ends of that heat safety fuse and even went as far to put a little blob of solder on each end. This is my first time being partially successful with solder. I wasn't um, heating up the surface that I wanted to solder enough before. This time I just I put that soldering iron on there and I held it on there for a good couple of minutes just sitting here holding that solder iron on the wires here where I put the solder here and here and I even put a little blob of solder on the soldering iron so it would have better heat transfer I, I saw that on a YouTube video I mean it kinda takes a little bit of practice to get the hang of soldering and especially in this type of a situation there you can see a blob yeah, not the fanciest job, but it's holding on there. So, good enough for me.
And I advise you not to do something like this because, you know, bypassing the heat safety fuse just compromises the whole safety of the heater or fan or whatever you're bypassing a heat safety fuse on. If, if something in this heater was to short out, or if the heat safety switch, say, got stuck in closed position, and never kicked off these elements if the fan happened to quit working then you know it could possess a fire risk and potentially damage your property so again yeah I advise you not to do this but I mean if you're just like me and you just want to do something for the fun of it and resurrect an old dead heater then I guess go ahead the clock's cutting me off again oh, only twice I guess it's two in the morning so I've already tried this and the elements did start to heat up and I noticed the fan motor even started to turn. So go figure, I guess it is a part of this circuit. I thought I was going to have to bypass the heat safety fuse in, in the motor too. Always let your soldering iron cool down sufficiently before you put it away. I think mine's good to go now. Those are some gunky stiff bearings. These ones were obviously greased. Okay, got her all oiled up now. And here's a quick test before I screw the grill back on. Well, this little fan sure moves a lot of air. Yeah, I feel heat. Okay, I guess here's a smoke test. High heat. I'm trying to see if my little wire that I made there getting overloaded and blowing or something. I don't, it doesn't seem to be. I think I'm going to buy one of these heaters because, well, I kind of like them. They throw a lot of heat. And they're cheap, so not like it'd be a big waste of money since this one isn't really um, reliable and safe to use anymore. But it's still a good emergency heater for something. Yeah, my wire ain't even glowing. Amazing. I'm gonna leave the camera on it for a while in case it sparks and catches on fire or something. So far, so good, I think. I just had an epiphany. I should make this into another little variable speed fan. Well, the clock's telling me it's 5 o'clock, so I guess I'm going to call her night. Just a fun little Saturday night project. I recommend you don't run your or have your unit plugged in. I don't recommend you run or well, I said the same thing over again. I don't recommend that. <laughs> Whew, I got a lot of editing to do. I'm just not saying the right words tonight. Hey, Slink. <laughs> 